<sighs> well, the independent cinematic universe has lost a true warrior. Writer, director, actor, and martial arts master Leo Fong recently passed away on February 22nd, 2022, at the age of 94. Leo Fong was a staple of independent martial arts and action films dating all the way back to 1974. Fong more recently earned cult status when his film Low Blow was featured on the hugely popular YouTube channel Red Letter Media. Hey, forget the sandwich. Hey, that episode has been viewed nearly two and a half million times. Leo continued making films until his very last days, appearing in soon-to-be-released action extravaganza Pact of Vengeance, directed by none other than Leo's fellow Red Letter Media darling, Len Kavazinski. Leo and Len have previously worked together in Len's 2018 Challenge of the Five Gauntlets. The two seem like two peas in a pod to me, so I felt it would be a nice tribute to hear Len's experiences with Low Blow himself. Whether you've been a longtime fan of Leo or new to the Fawniverse, join me and Len as we honor this cinematic legend with stories, insights, and a few laughs. I guess I found a new definition for using a private dick. This is the CCA. Well, when I had first spoken to Leo several years ago now, before I did my film Challenge of Five Gauntlets with him, uh, yeah, he had, he had messaged me on Facebook, or I should say I messaged him first on Facebook saying, hey, I'm putting together this martial art film. Uh, I thought of you for this character. Would you be interested? And I sent him a script and asked, who's your agent? Can I contact him? Can we get something together? Can I make you an offer? Can we, can we get this role in where, where you can star in my film here? Uh, and he's like, well, then I, I act as my own agent and stuff like that. So what, what do you have in mind? And, and he got back to me like within an hour of me contacting him on Facebook. And at this point, he's in his, his late 80s. In general, he's like me and, and, and stay in his own stuff, his own world, where he writes and produces his own things. So, uh, but that coupled with, of course, we, we've both been in martial arts for a very long time. And, you know, we, we had all those things in common and, and hit it off pretty well right off the bat. But my first impressions, he was, he was, he was super nice. Uh, he looked great for, for his age and things like that. But uh, he was really kind to everybody on set. And I noticed those things right off the bat because those are people I want, I usually want, you know, want to work with again. When you're nice to everybody, I understand the conditions. I know the long days that people put in sitting around doing nothing, waiting for their scenes to go on and things like that. But Leo knew what all this stuff was already all about because he had been through it several, several, several times over. So he really knew what it take to get independent pictures done. Action. Tell your boss, I'm coming to get him. Tell your boss, I'm coming to get him. Tell your boss, I'm coming to get him. Yeah, my first impressions were, were definitely that. He was really nice to everybody, very uh, southern gentlemanly. At the age of five, Leo's family moved to the States from mainland China and eventually landed in rural Arkansas. At heart, Leo was a good old boy with his southern draw. Tough man contest, $25,000 cash. And enough swagger to rock that John Denver look. After being bullied as a kid, Leo learned boxing. In his college days, Fong took up the robe, studying to be a minister. But eventually, martial arts became his true higher power. Leo's training soon put him in the path of Bruce Lee, where the two struck up a friendship. Lee was so impressed with Leo that he suggested Fong for the cover of Black Belt magazine in November 1970. Leo racked up awards and titles, even developing his very own style of mixed martial arts. But it wasn't until 1974 that he found his second calling. When I first came to know about Leo Fong, it was through his filmmaking endeavors. Uh, I learned later, of course, uh, you know, he, he's the, this legendary martial artist and things like that. But I first came to know of him uh, through his filmmaking endeavors like Low Blow, uh, like Bushido Blade. I'm an 80s kid, so Kill Point, those kinds of things. Even though I know uh, it started in the in the mid uh, early to mid 70s there with stuff like Murder in the Orient and stuff like that, which he co-starred with uh, his friend in real life and karate champion uh, uh, in his own right, Mar Ron Marchini there. Over the years, Leo appeared in dozens of movies and eventually caught the bug for writing, directing, and producing his own independent films. Low budget, often wacky action flicks usually sold to foreign markets. You do have a lot of balls coming in here calling my father a liar. What the hell is wrong with you, China man? You know what I'm saying? Ah. Hey. Ah. Balls. Ah. 
Oh, he ain't got no balls. <gasps> What makes Leo Fong's films unique, I think it's, a, I know personally from, from working with him and, and also, you know, producing my own independent films like, like he has done, you know, time and time again throughout his career, but uh, it's the heart and effort that goes into all these things. He would try to, well, we, we, we try to just sell the picture for as much as we could up front because we knew we probably wouldn't see much else after that. So we just tried to get the best deal and the best deal was always selling him to foreign territories. So we knew this. That's a lot of filmmaking knowledge. Really on set, he's just somebody that wants to keep going and keep going and keep going even at his age when he was 93 two years old almost 93 years old when he's doing my film Pact of Vengeance which we wrapped up uh, last October here uh, you know he just wanted to keep going keep going let's get the film done we can we can bang this out in a couple hours here we can do this we can do you know he always wanted, and I, I had to kind of save him from himself sometimes like, Leo you got I'm gonna give you a break for a minute, Leo, you know but he never wanted to he wanted to keep going and get everything done because in, in his own life he knew uh, what it took to get these kind of uh, independent pictures done. And that goes a long ways when you're making these micro-budget independent pictures. He had told me a story one time about uh, uh, the late actor Richard Lynch, who, who was on the set of uh, a movie he was producing called Showdown. And it was 90 degree, 100 degree heat where they were filming, the air conditioner was broken in their trailer. Uh, Richard Lynch wanted to leave and not complete the picture and leave set. And, and Leo said, you know what, just leave, get out of here. I'll, I'll finish the picture without you. I'll, I'll write around you, I'll, I'll, I'll peel off your character, I'll write around you, I'll write the script, I'll, 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 I'll you know, adjust the script so you're, you're gone, get out of here. And Richard Lynch was taken back a minute thinking, oh, he's, he's serious. And yeah, I'm serious and stuff. <laughs> and then they ended up uh, having a good time and stuff. And yes, uh, Richard Lynch stayed on and obviously finished the picture and stuff like that. But I thought that was just a cool story of, you know, this is what makes those films unique as you're doing whatever it takes to get them done kind of thing. Speaking of low budget movie stars, Leo Fong regularly worked alongside a certain someone someone whose physical form I may or may not have manifested myself into here on this planet. And for Red Letter Media fans that, that are also, you know, that if they know Leo, chances are they know Cam Cameron Mitchell. <laughs> We did several films with, and that was a good friend of his uh, through most uh, a good chunk of his life, actually. But uh, he actually, Cameron Mitchell, introduced uh, Leo to his wife many, 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 many years ago. Uh, I, I think uh, Leo said Minnie was working as a nurse in a hospital or something like that, and introduced her to Cam as Cam would be in the hospital from time to time uh, for some health issues. And uh, they introduced Leo Fong to his wife. <laughs> So up until now, I've ignored the elf in the room, which is to say that Leo's recent fame came less due to his acclaimed filmmaking art, and more because of a lot of his work can be, how can I say, unintentionally funny to modern audiences. His hallmark acting. These guys, uh, they play for real. Zany plots. Okay, and self-deprecating humor have all become reasons why so many people adore Leo Fong. I had spoken to Leo briefly about uh, the Red Letter Media and how he had the, this fan base there and he had hundreds of thousands of fans through, through Red Letter Media that, is, that had seen its stuff. Um, but you know, he was very self-aware of what he was doing. He was just kind of flattered and got a chuckle out of, uh, you know, people still getting enjoyment from those films that were shot so, so long ago. Uh, he didn't really have uh, much of a diva attitude about anything. So he, he, he was not uh, upset or angry in any fashion that people thought, oh, they're, they're so bad, they're good, or they're unintentionally funny and, and, and stuff like that. So so uh, I think uh, maybe if you met him and talked to him like I have, maybe you'd think uh, you'd be surprised he's a little more self-aware than maybe you may think. But if you're watching a, a film from the uh, mid 80s, uh, um, really a small budget picture action film called Low Blow from 1986 uh, era there uh, in expecting The Shining or Close Encounters or something, uh, maybe your viewership might be a little misplaced there and you're, you're in the wrong genre. <laughs> you know, I get that a lot in, in my own works as well. So me and Leo, I think I have, have several things in common. If you'd like to learn more about Leo, I will put links to all things Fong in the comments. Be sure to check those out. More importantly, let's all honor the memory of Leo Fong by watching his very last film, directed by Len, Pact of Vengeance. My new film with Leo Fong, Pact of Vengeance, it is, it is nearing completion. It is, it's in post-production now. Uh, uh, it's, it's going, moving right along, so that shouldn't be too long now, a couple months. And you'll be able to watch Pact of Vengeance first 
on my Patreon campaign. The last several films I've done, uh, even going back to Challenge of Five Gauntlets, which Leo Fawn, which is on my Patreon, you can download it and own it there. If you want to see it before anybody else, join the Patreon in it because it's going to premiere on there first. So uh, uh, it's patreon.com slash killerwolffilms. Uh, I hope you check it out and uh, thanks for checking out this interview. You know what to do to help out. If you wish to partake in enslaving the world one bad movie at a time, then find us on Instagram and officially join the Alliance.